Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now. To always give him the thanks. To always give him the praise. And always give him the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. He always keep it real. He's always honest. And you can always depend on him. You can always rely on him. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Even when you don't see things happening, he's good. Even in the midst of your pain, he's good. Even in the midst of your suffering, he's good. Even in the midst of your hurting, he is good. Even in the midst when things not even adding up, he's still good. Everything about Jesus is good. No matter what nobody say, this word is good. No matter what nobody say, his promises, oh help me Jesus, is good. His word is good. His promises is good because he is good. That's why praise is an everyday thing. That's why I'm always encouraging all my brothers and sisters to praise every day. I don't want y'all to get in the habit to start praising Jesus when things are going good because one thing in life, in certain part in your life, something's going to go bad. Something is going to turn south. What, you going to start praising? Why? God still is God. He still is good. His word is good. His promises is good. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, glory, hallelujah, he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why I want all my brothers and sisters to start praising. Praise should always be in your spirit. Praise should always be on the fruit of your lips. Praise should always be in your heart, no matter what. And if you're in love with Jesus right now, I mean truly, truly, truly in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now and give Jesus a shout out of praise. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we humbly come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this chance of a lifetime. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message today, God, that's going to keep us full and satisfied. <clears throat> Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at today, Jesus, but in your house, in your house, Jesus, seeking you, praising you, glorify you, magnify you, and shout out your holy name. Jesus, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, and your house cannot be moved or bothered by nothing or anything. Father God, your word said Matthew 18, 19, where two or more gather in your name. There you are in the midst. And Father God, I believe and I know God because I have unshakable faith. There's going to be more than two people on your line, God. And God, I know that you're in the midst right now. Father God, you have your way with your daughters right now. Father God, you have your way with your sons right now. Heavenly Father God, you are inviting. You have an open invitation in this place right now. Father God, you have an open invitation and you are invited into my sister's life right now. Father God, you have an open invitation and you invited into my brother's life right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation and you invited into God's house right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation and you invited into my sister's house right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation and you invited into my brother's life right now. Father God, I'm asking you to move like you never moved before. Let your presence be known through this place right now. Heavenly Father God, I'm just asking you in your name right now to strengthen our faith right now. Strengthen our discernment right now, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now in your holy, precious mighty name. 
Please do a new thing for my sisters right now. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking in your name right now today, can you please do a new thing in my brother's life right now today? Allow the angels to join us in praise and worship in your house right now today, Jesus. This is your house, God. And Father God, we are so thankful, we are so grateful and honored just to be right here today. Father God, we're here right now today to let you know, Jesus, that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will, that we are available to serve you, honor you, magnify you, because God, you is good all the time. And Father God, we just love you, God, and God, as long as we're in the palm of your hand, we know that we're all right. We know that we're going to be okay. Father God, you didn't leave us, you didn't bring us this far just to drop us off. And Father God, even though we don't understand what's going on, Father God, even though we don't understand what's happening, Father God, we still trust in you. Father God, we still hold on to your unchangeable hands. My sisters, my brothers, don't you dare give up on God right now. My sisters, my brothers, don't you dare let go of God's hand right now. This ain't the time and this ain't the place to give up. This ain't the time. This ain't the place to even question your faith or what God is about to do. If you believe that God is moving, if you believe that God is about to show up and show out, if you believe that God is about to do a new thing, give God some some praise right now. Give God some glory right now in his house right now. Hallelujah. And Father God, we are so thankful. We are so grateful. And we are so honored and blessed to be part of your ministry today. And I want to welcome all my sisters, all my brothers to the Lord Take Over Ministries. I am Servant Minister LT and God wants to talk to you. Amen. Amen. Just like praise is an everyday thing, repentance is also an everyday thing too. Heavenly Father God, I boldly come before you right now today. And I'm asking your name. Please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive me. My sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for this for this um, chance of a lifetime. Thank you, Father God, for this clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. You didn't have to do it for us today, Jesus, but you did anyway. And God, we want to give you the thanks and praise and glory for it. But Father God, before I get started, I got to keep it real with you. And I have to be honest with you. To let you know, Jesus, I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. That's why I brag. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Can I keep it real with you, my sisters? Can I keep it real with you, my brothers? I want to talk to some of y'all. Y'all got to start watching out from the people who you associate with, who you're hanging around with, who you conversate with. 
you must be careful. Because a lot of y'all, you hanging with the wrong crowd. You associate with the wrong type of people. And you already know who you are. You know how they get down. You know how they rock. And if you know how a certain individual get down, if you know how a certain individual rock, you ain't no different and you ain't no better than them. Actually, you are worse than who they are. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of y'all, y'all know what they do. They just keep up a lot of mess, a lot of confusion, always talking about this, always talking about that, always got somebody else's name in their mouth, always talking about somebody else's personal problems. But I'm going to keep it real with you, if that's okay. I'm going to be honest with you, if that's okay. If you got, if you can take the time out, my brothers and sisters, I want y'all to listen to me good and carefully. If you can take the time out to listen to someone bash somebody else and talk about somebody else, you are no different than the next person. But what some of y'all will do, you will sit right there, you will hear what that person is saying about the next man. You will hear what that person is saying about the next woman. Then go back and tell that person what that person said. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it real with you. I ain't going to need sugarcoat this. Don't come back and tell me nothing. What somebody said about me. Don't tell me anything. Or what they said about me. Because if you took the time out to listen. If you took the time out to be a part of it. You tell me what you said about me. I don't want to hear what they said because I know how they get down. I don't want to hear what they said because I know how they rock. I want to hear everything what you said because they was talking. And Oh, help me, Jesus. If they was talking about somebody and you were standing right there in the crowd, you had something to say too because if you didn't have nothing to say, you would have moved. But you didn't move. You stood right there. So that means that you was ear dropping. And sooner or later, by you hanging with the wrong crowd and the wrong people, you added your two cents to it too. So you tell your part. What did you say about that brother? You tell your part. What did you say about that sister? You tell your part. What did you say about that co-worker? You tell your part. What did you say about the minister in church? You tell your part. What did you say about somebody's husband? You tell your part. You say, you tell your part and say what you said about somebody's wife. You tell your part. What did you say? We don't want to hear what they said. We want to know what you said. Because we know you said something. And there's no need to try to sweep up under the road. Oh, I didn't say nothing. Oh, I just listened. No, you wouldn't. If you took time out to listen, you took time out to gossip. I'm going to keep it real with you. Because you know how that crowd get down. And the moment that you took your time out to come run and tell me something about what they said, Guess what's going to happen? They're going to come right back and turn around and say, oh, you know, so-and-so is saying something about you too. So that's why I'm here today to say, don't come back and tell us what they said about us. You tell your part too. What did you say about that brother? What did you say about that sister? Because we know that you said something. We don't know what you said, but eventually the truth going to come out. So your mouth was going to keep it real. You might as well be honest and say, oh, this is what I said. Don't say, oh, it slipped out. No, it didn't slip out. That's what you wanted to say because you want to be part of the crowd. You were trying to fit in. That's what that was. I know you said something about me because I know they talk about people. I know you said something about me because I know how they get down. I know that you said something about me because I know how they rock because they miserable. They unhappy. So yes, they talk about people all day long. So I know that you said something about me too. 
but you got the audacity to come back and tell me what they said. You got the audacity to sit there and smile in somebody's face, knowing that you fake, knowing that you phony, knowing that you said something too. But you want to report what somebody else said. How dare you? How messy can you be? You was right there in the crowd. You was you was right there in the huddle. So yes, I know you said something. You can sit there and say, oh no, I promise I ain't. No, 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 no. Because if you know they ain't no good. And you know how they get down. And if you know how they rock, you said something too. Point blank period. There's no if, there's no and, there's no but about it. And some of y'all need to start checking yourself on who that you associate with. You got to start checking yourself who you're rocking with. Because everybody ain't, meant, everybody ain't meant for you to hang around with. The moment I see somebody start gossiping about somebody, automatically I'm taking off. I don't want no part of that. Period. Because you sit right there long enough. Them, them bad spirits is going to jump on you. And next thing you know, you're going to do more talking than what they're doing. You're going to be you're gonna be hating more than how they hating. Because you're right there in the crowd. You're right there in the bunch. And everybody's going to put their label on you because they know how they get down. They know how they rock. At first they're going to say, oh, you know, so-and-so hang with them. So you know how he do. You know how she do. I'm just going to be honest with you. So if you know that you're doing that, you might as well tell your part too. Stop going back telling everybody else what somebody else said when you know that you said something too. And that's what I hear. Oh, you know, so-and-so said this about you. Oh, so-and-so said this about your children. Oh, so-and-so said this about your wife. Oh, so-and-so said this about your husband. Oh, so-and-so said this about your house. Oh, so-and-so said this about your finances. Okay, but what did you say? I know what they said. But I want to know, what did you say? Can you be honest and tell me that? Can you keep it real and tell me that? Can you tell me what you said? If you can tell me what you said, everything will be all right. But you got to tell me what you said. Don't come back and tell me what my brother said about me or what my sister said about me, what my co-worker said about me, what my in-law said about me, what my family member said about me. I want to know what you said about me. That's what I want to know. What did you say? Because I know you had a lot to say. If you was taking it in, you're going to dish it out. If you took time to listen, you got time to air it out. I'm going to be honest with you. You know who y'all are. See, the key to it, we're not worried about the people in the crowd that are doing the talking. We don't worry about the people who was in the crowd. We know how the people doing in the crowd, but we are focused on the people who are trying to join the crowd, who are trying to join the team, because our eyes is on you, because we know how they get down. We know how they rock. So we know how they get down, and if we know how they rock, and you are part of it, so my eyes is going to be on you, because I know that you saying something. I know that you adding your two cents to it. I'm going to be honest with you. Amen? Amen. So can you please turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to read verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to read verse 33. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not be misled. I'm going to start right there. Paul already telling you, do not be misled. And how in the world could a person be misled? Because you want to be cool. You want to fit in the crowd. You want to feel like that you're important. You want to feel like that you're a celebrity. 
So what they're going to do, the bad people is going to try to mislead you. They're going to try to corrupt your mind. They're going to tell you, oh, you need to come hang with us. Oh, we doing this over here. So they telling you so you know how these people get down. So if you know how to get down, don't be misled by these people. I don't care if they popular or unpopular. I don't care what kind of uh, house they live in, what kind of car they got, how much bling bling they got on. Do not be misled. Because the moment that they mislead you and you start hanging around with them, they, you are already attached to them. Those spirits automatically going to jump and form on you. And next thing you know, you're going to be doing the same thing that they are doing. And you don't even realize that you're doing it. But you will be doing it. You're going to be acting like them, talking like them. And the whole time they're talking about you too. So there's no need for you to be to try to be fit in the crowd. Because the moment that you try to leave that crowd, guess what the first thing they're going to say? They're going to go back and tell that person everything that you said, even though that you try to cover it up, even though that you said that you didn't say that, the same people that you was rocking with, the same people that you was hanging with, you're going to be the same people who are going to turn back and go back and tell that person everything that what you said. So you might as well go and keep it real and tell your part first. You might as well get it out the way. Because they're going to tell it. They're going to snitch. They're going to do that. Because the first thing they're going to say, you know how we get down. But I'm going to tell you about so-and-so. They try to pretend like they ain't doing that. They try to pretend like they ain't saying that. But they had a whole mouth, a whole mouth for to say about you. They was running your name all down the dirt. T telling us this and telling us that. How you think we know about this? How you think we know about that? We didn't know that, but they did. So that's why I said, don't go back telling somebody what somebody else said if you're not going to tell your part. Don't do it. Do not be misled. Bad company, what it does, corrupts good character. Come back to your senses. As you ought and stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Because they're going to put you to shame. At the end of the day. You can cover it up all day long. You can go back and tell this person this. And tell that person that by the end of the day. They're going to shame you. Because they're going to go back and tell everything. What you said about them. They're going to do that. You can sit there and say, oh, I ain't say this, I ain't say that. It might not happen at that very moment. But somewhere later down the road, those same people, you're going to run into them at the grocery store or at the movies or at the mall somewhere or at a restaurant. And the first thing they're going to say, oh, when the last time you saw so-and-so? And you're going to say, well, I ain't seen him in a while. Oh, I ain't seen her in a while. I ain't talked to him in a while. Well, you know what they said. You're going to say, what are you talking about? What he said or what she said. Oh, he said this about you. Oh, she said this about you. I see them hanging in your face, but they ain't telling you what they said behind your back. But in your mind, you say, okay, then. But he and she they came back and told me everything what you said, but they never came back and told them what they said. So the point I'm making to somebody right now, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who Jesus is preaching to. Do not go back and tell nobody nothing what somebody else said because at the end of the day, you was talking about me too. So you tell your part, what did you say about me? What did you say about me? Because you was talking about me too. You were spread my information too. You were spread my business too. So what did you say? And if this word is for you, and you know God is talking to you, give God some thanks right now. Give God some praise right now. Give God some glory right now. Even if you know somebody who is doing that right now, the first thing that you got to tell them, my sisters, my brothers, don't come back telling me nothing. You tell me your part. What did you say about me? Because if you took the time out to run and tell me what they said, they mean that you said something too. They mean that you added your two cents. You tell your part. Don't come telling me nothing. Unless you're going to tell your part what you said about me too. If you can't say that, I'll holler at you. 
Because I know that you talked about me too. You ain't no different than them. Amen? Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. Always continue to keep your eyes Focus on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Always continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow sisters and brothers. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep out in prayer, my sisters and brothers. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.